in this video we wrap up the discussion of the dependence of the temperature of the rate on the temperature uh, by doing a numerical example with Arrhenius expression. Okay, we've said that um, the dependence of the temperature, uh, the dependence of the rate on the temperature, uh, enters the rate law through the rate constant, and we can uh, see using Arrhenius expression that the dependence uh, of that rate constant on the temperature has this functional form. And we have explained what the pre-exponential factor A is and what the acti activation energy uh, means as well. Okay, so uh, one of the questions that we can ask then is, well, uh, uh, how much does the uh, rate or the rate constant of a chemical reaction uh, changes uh, if we change the temperature just a little bit? Okay, so to, to solve those type of problems, what we're actually going to do is derive an equation that relates two rate constants at two different temperatures to uh, perhaps the pre-exponential factor and the activation energy. To do that, what we actually uh, start with is uh, the logarithmic form of this expression, which is like this. Natural log of k is equal to the natural log of the pre-exponential factor minus the activation energy over the gas constant, 1 over t. Okay, so what we're going to do is write this expression for two different temperatures, and then we will try to consolidate uh, those expressions so that we can come up with one equation that relates two rate constants. Uh, with the temperatures at which the, uh, those rate constants uh, are. All right, so let's assume that uh, this expression is for temperature T2, which can be any temperature that you wish. Okay, so the way that this turns into is that T turns into T2, and this K should change as well, because it should depend on temperature, and we can call it K2. Now, the activation energy does not depend on the temperature. That's the assumption that we actually have right here, and we're also assuming that the activation energy, uh, the pre-exponential factor, does not depend on temperature either. Okay, uh, that's, uh, there's actually we will see in the next chapter that uh, this is not exactly true. Uh, the rule, this uh, pre-exponential factor does depend slightly on the temperature, but for the purpose of uh, this discussion, we're assuming that it doesn't. All right, we can rewrite some expression at a different temperature t1. Okay, so what we'll have is that uh, the natural log of the rate constant at that temperature t1 is going to be equal to uh, this expression in which the only change here would be in that temperature T1. All right, so if we divide uh, the top expression minus the bottom expression, we can arrive at a, uh, an equation that consolidates uh, what we want. Okay, so not the log of K2 minus not the log of K1. These two terms will cancel each other out, and then we will have minus the activation energy over R1 over T2, then minus minus the activation energy over R, 1 over T1. Okay. All right, so uh, let's see if we can make this uh, expression a little bit more tractable. Notice that here we have the difference of two natural logs, and that is the natural log of the ratio. Okay, so the natural log of K2 over K1. And then we can take here a common factor of minus Ea uh, over R, and the activation energy over R. 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. Okay, again, this is an expression that is uh, very useful because it allows us to predict how the rate constant is going to change if we change the temperature and we know what the activation energy is. Okay, notice that the change of the rate constant in this case uh, uh, does not seem to have uh, a dependence on the pre exponential factor because that pre exponential factor doesn't change with temperature. And again, that's an assumption. <coughs> All right, so let's uh, solve an numerical problem in which we're going to calculate the following. Suppose that there's a reaction uh, that has an activation energy of about 50 kilojoules per mole, which is a reasonable activation energy. Uh, many chemical reactions will have activation energies of around this order, anywhere from, say, 10 uh, to about 200 kilojoules per mole or so. Those are uh, a pretty common 50, would be a reasonable number. And the idea would be, uh, uh, suppose that we run this reaction in the bench stop in the laboratory at 288 Kelvin, all right? But this is a reaction of uh, human importance, and we would like to know what the rate constant would be at a at physiological temperature, T2, all right? So the question that we're asking is, well, by how much does the rate uh, change when uh, uh, we actually change the temperature from the lab to physiological temperature? Okay, so uh, you actually would, uh, again, plug in here this T1 right there, T2 right here, and the activation energy up there, 
And then you can come up with the K2 over K1 ratio, which tells you uh, how much larger the rate constant at uh, physio physiological temperature is with respect to uh, room temperature. And this number happens to be 2.2, okay, uh, with two significant figures in this case. Okay, and that tells you that in just a change in 12 degree Kelvin, okay, a very, very small increase in temperature, okay, the rate more than, the rate constant, and therefore the rate, more than doubles. There is a huge change uh, to the rate constant for such a slight uh, uh, change in, uh, in temperature. Okay, notice that uh, that is all uh, due to the activation energy. If we actually were to increase this activation energy, for example, make it 100 kilojoules per mole, you would see that this um, increase in the rate constant is actually greater. You would get to about 100 kilojoules, uh, sorry, to about a factor of five almost. Okay, so uh, again, that tells you that uh, how much the rate constant uh, increases when you increase the temperature, okay, is sensitive to the activation energy. Uh, if you have a low activation energy, then the increase would not be very much. But if you have a high activation energy, then the increase in the rate constant will be much, much greater. Okay, so this kind of uh, wraps, us, wraps up our discussion of uh, uh, the dependence of the rate and the rate constant on the temperature through the Arrhenius expression.